expressed on this radio station. Its programs and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Hey, it's Celebrate Truth Radio, where we expose the world's lies and celebrate the truth every Saturday here on Revolution Radio. I'm your host, Robbie Davidson. Join with me, as always, my awesome co-host, Pastor Nate Wolf. How's it going, Pastor Nate? Hey, Robbie, it's going very well. Uh, are you sure you're up to this tonight? Oh, it's going to be fun, man. We just got back from Take on the World 2019. Real quick, what was your overall impression? Wow, I was uh, I was blown away, and it was a real honor to be there as a speaker for the first time. You know, it's, it's kind of like almost uh, the old Nate and Jennifer last year and the new Nate and Jennifer this year. Uh, so it was, it was kind of surreal. It was incredible. It was amazing to meet your whole family. And speaking of which, we're going to have the entire family on tonight. For a special edition of Celebrate Truth Radio, we're going to have Harrison, Holden, Hudson, and Hannah, as well as your wife, on to discuss pretty much your entire journey, as well as just leading up to uh, current uh, events that have all transpired here over the last year. We're pretty much coming up on the one-year anniversary. Yeah, it's uh, September 14th. will be one year since I was fired uh, for simply attending the conference. Must have been quite something. It's going to be interesting to hear their uh, their take on it all, on it all, and just how everything came to be as far as uh, what you were looking into, and even just new stuff that's transpired even after uh, you know the fact as far as coming to biblical cosmology and flat Earth, and and it was really exciting too to have your new book uh, being released at the uh, conference. Maybe you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that was uh, really exciting. You know, originally I was. Uh, starting to sweat it out just a bit because I had a few little adjustments I needed to make and uh, we ended up getting everything taken care of just in time. I decided to do a little bit faster uh, shipping and that way uh, I ensured that the books were in in time and so I had ordered about 125 books and uh, it was really smart because I had several books that I gave out to certain folks and uh, I think I ended up selling about 50 or 60 copies at the conference, which was amazing. And that gave me just, uh, you know, a handful of books to have in stock when I came back into town, which was good because as soon as I got back into town, I've already uh, had some orders to fill. And now my book is officially listed publicly on lulu.com. So folks can go to lulu.com and they could just type in Fired for Truth in the search there and my book will pop up and folks can just order right from there they can choose their shipping and uh, i've already had two international orders come through which was awesome and uh, one of the nice things about lulu is they can handle international uh piece of cake but if i do it you know then i've got to fill out custom forms and all that fun stuff so uh international folks should go through lulu.com and i'm also now uh have my book on sacred word publishing uh, that's Zen Garcia and his family, uh, Joy and Justin Garcia. So very excited about that. So there's three different ways that folks can pick up a copy of my book. That's a very uh, exciting. And and I wanted to go on the record and say how proud I, I am of you for staying up as late as you did. That take on the oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. I mean, the that first incredible. One of the first nights, I think it was about 1.50 a.m., and and I was actually pretty tired, and so I turned in just after 2. But that Sunday night, I know I was up till uh, 3.30 in the morning, and I think I was just on adrenaline. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. man, this thing's just about winding down, and it was the last night, so, you know, I had to stay up late with all my buds. And uh, so, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that I uh, made it past 3 a.m., and uh, I don't know, you probably stayed up longer than that, but... Yeah, I think a little bit longer, but uh, I was pretty surprised when I saw how late you were up. That was pretty <laughs> incredible. You're, uh, each each conference, it seems like you're staying up later and later. That's what seems to be the trend. Yeah, I'm, I'm working my way up to a Robbie Davidson level, but I just I don't know if I'll be there by FEIC 19. We'll have to see. 
Well, I, I actually slept at Take on the World uh, each night, so that, that was definitely an improvement. Oh, um, cool. I think Rick Hummer and others, uh, they definitely stayed up a lot later than I did most of the night, so um, I definitely was beat at uh, Take on the World as far as longevity when it came to staying up. So yeah. it, was, it was great, though. I mean, seeing everyone again, uh, new faces, all the speakers, uh, you know, that was just an incredible time. I'm sure you had a, an awesome time as well with uh, getting to fellowship with all the uh, various speakers. Yeah. And take on the world. I thought that yeah, was that was amazing. I mean, uh, I knew it would be, you know, it was a first for me as far as that, uh, being with all of those speakers. And so uh, I, I kind of had an idea of what to expect. But until I, we experienced that, you know, you really just don't know. And it was so it was so relaxed. The fellowship was great. There weren't any conflicts whatsoever. People mm. were getting along. We just enjoyed ourselves a lot. It was so much fun, so much fun. And I know in this uh, program, we've been able to share, you know, your story a few times. Actually, Celebrate Truth was, I think, the second uh, interview you did when all this stuff took place of you being fired. Yeah. And uh, we were able to do the interview. And surprising enough, it is actually the only interview. I was actually talking to my wife. And early in 2015, I did a show of about five episodes where I interviewed different people. But then since then, I have never interviewed someone on my channel, nor have I afterwards. If you actually wow. look at it, I've never done it. So I find that really incredible <laughs> that the fact that uh, you were the only one that was like, uh, yep, got to interview Pastor Nate. And uh, all of a sudden we got you on. And all of a sudden now you're the uh, my co-host uh, on the show. And uh, yeah. we've been able to uh, interact and, and meet uh, more than a, a few times now. I think uh, we're, we're at about three or four times in person. And uh, we're gearing up for Dallas, the, for the Flat Earth International Conference in yeah. Dallas, Texas, which... I just looked at the uh, timer, and I think we're almost at 70 days away. So it's coming up very, very quickly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Big D, man. Dallas, it's going to be amazing. And sounds like it's almost literally in Rob Skiba's backyard. So he <laughs> sounded pretty excited about being so close. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, Bob's actually in the chat room and YouTube. And uh, shout out to, to Bob Nodell from Globebusters. Uh, he'll yeah. be uh, doing a thing with Globebusters there. Obviously, Rob Skeeb is going to be there. Mark Sargent, our special guest this year, will be Owen Benjamin. Everyone's really excited. Things are ramping up. And I've got a lot on my plate. Uh, when you look at 70 days, you think that's a long ways away, but it comes up really quick. <laughs> it comes yeah, up really quick. Yeah, I fast. know. Take on the world snuck up on us. And. It was like, man, oh, we got lots of time to FEIC. It's like, nope, we do not. We got to get cracking here. So, yeah. yeah, I hope to have, uh, I hope to have at least forty copies of my book with me at FEIC. And uh, I know there's some folks there that obviously won't, wouldn't be at Take on the World. They couldn't make it, or they're much closer to Dallas, so they're going to be there for that. Uh, so that's going to be amazing. And. Uh, I can't wait. It's uh, my first experience at FEIC last year was wonderful, mm -hmm. and uh, Denver was a great venue. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say when the smoke cleared, <laughs> everything was uh, was wonderful out there. So, Yeah, well, there's no surprises this year. Everyone obviously knows uh, up front exactly what's happening. And if you actually yeah. go to fe 2019 dot com you can actually see the speakers you can see the schedule everything's up it's a work in progress but it's pretty much already uh there as far as uh the entirety of of the program we're really excited about it uh you know be, i'll be in contact with uh, isaac about uh, shirts and hats and there's just so much on the plate but uh, it's exciting. oh yeah i'm excited and speaking of isaac and tony chavez um and shirts i'm working with them on having a fired uh, a fired for truth shirt Nice. Um, so we're looking at some some options with that, and uh, I didn't want to put pressure on them because it was close to take on the world when I decided, hey, I need to get a shirt. And, uh, you know, I was wearing a shirt last year, but I've got a, a shirt idea for folks to purchase and not just support me and my ministry, but just to support truth. And so, of course, my, you know, my name is Fired for Truth, but this is going to be a Fired Up for Truth shirt. And we probably will have uh, John 832 printed, uh, you know, the truth will set you free. So I'm excited for that. Uh, that's something that people can rock when they're at the grocery store or the post office mm -hmm. or, you know, hanging out with their uh, family on the weekend mm -hmm. and maybe uh, turn a few heads and maybe get some uh, engagement with people. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And I mean, with this entire journey, it's just so nice to have your entire family being part of it and actually being very receptive. You know, I, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm still in shock 
that all of your family members, you know, to different degrees are pretty much on board, you know, as far as, you know, where God has you on your journey and just everything that's yeah. transpired over the last year. It's going to be exciting to be able to talk to each one of them tonight. And I thought it would be important well, let's, uh, to make it easy. We can start with Harrison, the eldest of, yeah. uh, of the children. And, um, you know, we can maybe talk to him and just kind of get his uh, take on how everything, you know, went down, what he was feeling, what because it must be an entire shock. Uh, to the system when all this stuff is happening so quickly. So, I mean, you can kind of dialogue as well, yeah. you know, recreating exactly what was going on, but it would be nice to hear from Harrison first, and then we will uh, talk to Holden, then yeah. Hudson, and then Hannah. So, awesome. I mean, having all four of your children on tonight to be able to talk about it, and then we'll, an hour or two, we'll really get into Jen's perspective, because as nice. your wife, uh, it's very important that uh, your wife is behind you when all of a sudden these things are happening, and uh, oh, yeah. what a, what an incredible year for you. Well, and it's really uh, just to give folks a little bit of a background and, and maybe the kids will share some of this. But, you know, we moved uh, here in 2011 to the Toledo area. And actually, I was fired from my previous ministry, not anything to do with flat earth or truth or stuff. But uh, after being in Idaho uh, for eight years, um, I had respectfully challenged the eldership there because they were they were basically putting everything on me all of the shepherding the responsibilities and uh they were kind of uh making me the point man uh to to the point that um i was reporting into them about everything that was happening in the church with the, with the uh, people and i pointed out to them i said you know you guys are shepherds you need to shepherd the flock and uh, you can't just, you know, wait for Nate to go in, you know, send Nate in, he'll scope it out, and then you decide what uh, what stuff you want to be involved in. I said, you know, I'm happy to be one of the first people there, but if the shepherds are not there, uh, you know, if they're not on the front lines for the congregation, then that's, that's biblically, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And of course, you could imagine that, uh, you know, when a minister is hired, right, um, even though they're ministering with the church, uh, sometimes the leadership forgets that, uh, you know, they are a partner in ministry and not simply an employee. But, you know, in this American church model, sometimes they forget that. And so they didn't like their employee uh, chastising them, you know, for their uh, lack of responsibility. So I was given no, uh, 90 days notice in that uh, ministry, and uh, that's what led us to Ohio. So, you know, my kids and my wife and myself had been you know, challenged uh, through that process. That was the first time that I had been fired. Um, and the kids were younger and didn't understand, I think, as much of it, but they were still very much affected by it. And so that's the backdrop, you know, moving here and the kids growing up, uh, junior high and high school. And so when their father gets fired again, mm -hmm. you know, that just really was kind of a, a double whammy. So I'm going to let Harrison jump in here sure. and he can share his uh, perspectives on, you know, uh, maybe Harrison start with when you guys realized that mom and I were, were seriously looking into this flat earth thing before I even got fired. You know, what were you, what were you thinking? Well, definitely, um, you know, you've always been somebody to, to speak up, you know, when new topics occur and, and, uh, you know, you always, you know, I think even one of the conferences, you know, question everything, you know, um, when you get new topics or you see new things, you know, even if you're completely set on your biblical view or your, you know, whatever viewpoint you have, um, you're always willing to, you know, to, just to listen, to sit down, to speak with whoever, uh, study the subject, open the, you know, to open into the scriptures, you know, and I mean, even at that meeting, you know, um, that you had, before, you know, while you were being fired, you know, you were even trying after after they had said, OK, well, you're done. You know, you still wanted to talk to them about that. You still mm -hmm. made an effort to, you know, reach out to them and, you know, they wouldn't even listen to you. You know, yeah. and so I guess being the oldest of four, you know, I was the most understanding of, of what happened in Washington, mm -hmm. you know, moving around my whole life. You know, Alaska, Michigan, Washington, you know, here I lived in, in Arkansas, you know, by myself at school for a year. Um, but I probably had it the best out of all four of us children uh, upon your firing because, uh, you know, I wasn't away at college like Holden and I was done with my schooling. I was working full time, you know, staying busy. So um, that definitely helped me, you know, um, mm. with, you know, cope with everything. Um, but I, I definitely tried to be there, you know, for the family and, you know, talk to, to people and, and to, uh, you know, 
just at least listen. I didn't I didn't dismiss everything. Yeah, some things, you know, at first uh, I was kind of confused about, you know, hey, where is this coming from? You know, my dad believes what? Or, you know, that's actually in the Bible. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've read through the scriptures. You know, it, you know the, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, through through the gospel, through what Jesus said, through Isaiah, you know, and, and just overlooking all these things, all these words. And, you know, going mm-hmm. back to the original, you know, Hebrew, Greek, whatever uh, it came from, you know, and, and seeing how, you know, the English language and, and you know, all these translations and how many people translated it and all these different, you know, versions of the Bible, NIV, ESV, you know, and, and just looking upon some of those, it kind of just really started to open my eyes to actually, you know, what was there. Um, but, you know, I've always been, you know, supportive of you and I've always trusted you. Um, I, know I think it's awesome that, you know, despite everything that happened to you, you're willing to you know, to stand up and honestly, you know, the Flat Earth or, or uh, you know, th- this whole group of people uh, have been a huge support group uh, through you and for us, yeah. you know, even if they don't understand. Uh, knowing that you have people that you can call or text, you know, talk to or, you know, debate with or, you know, study the scriptures with, because without them, honestly, I don't think, you know, any of us would, would be here. You know, yeah. Yeah. The, the support was uh, hugely important. And, you know, Robbie, one thing that was really a blessing was that we we last couple of years, especially with having young adult kids and high school kids, you know, they're they're older and they can process more. They're more mature. And so Jennifer and I, you know, we we kind of erred on the side of being very uh, transparent with the kids, you know, and having discussions with them to try mm-hmm. to get their input. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the kids were able to process along with us. And also they they started to see all of the support that came in. I mean, they saw me on the phone daily, you know, with people like yourself and others who were encouraging me and, uh, you know, helping us, asking us how we were doing. They saw, you know, they saw when the studio five boxes arrives on our front step and somebody mm. uh somebody had donated an entire studio uh which is really the studio that i'm in right now not a whole lot has changed mm-hmm. i mean they saw they saw the providence of god you know working in that situation but but yeah harrison being the oldest he he kind of experienced the most uh in uh, idaho we were on the idaho washington border uh so he remembers more probably about uh when we left there and came here so did you sit down but, in the whole family like all at once and really just come out because i mean it was coming out here and there but was it kind of like a hey family we have to have a meeting the earth is flat kind of thing <laughs> well we uh <clears throat> the first person that really kind of engaged was holden because he was uh doing a semester online at the time and so he was he was home when the others were at work or school and uh, he and I kind of got engaged. And so he kind of got sucked in and I encouraged him to, to look at some of these things for himself. And so he kind of went down the rabbit hole and then we started pulling the others in. I think Harrison was next and then Hannah and then Hudson. And we did have some family discussions, um, but, you know, we never pressured the kids. We said, this is what, you know, we've discovered. This is what we're looking into. Here's some, you know, here's some videos to consider. Here's some scriptures to consider. And uh, one of the first things that we did as a family, I remember it well because it was in the early spring of 2017, just a few weeks after Jennifer and I were pretty much, you know, locked in. And uh, there was a NASA bloopers video that was circulating on YouTube. Mm. And it was just kind of a medley of all kinds of different CGI mistakes and, Mm -hmm. you know, slips of the tongue and all of that. And I said, you know, don't take my word for it. Take NASA's word. So uh, I showed them the video and, you know, just just the the buffoonery and the lies and all of this stuff. My kids' mouths were just dropped open, you know. <laughs> yeah. And they were all like, seriously, like those were NASA astronauts. Those yeah. were, you know, people in the, you know, uh, the uh, ISS, you know, they just couldn't believe it. And so then they were all off and running, you know, kind of on their own time frame. And uh, like I said, we did have many family discussions, but it mm-hmm. wasn't like it wasn't like we sat, you know, our kids down every night and said, sure. okay, we're going to sit down and study this and whether you like it or not, you know, yeah. they all, they all kind of uh, came to their own conclusion. And within a few months, they all pretty much were 
convinced of uh, the true biblical cosmology. So Harrison, for you, like in your circles, what's it been like? Do uh, people in your circles know that your dad, you know, kind of the reasons why he was fired or has the flat earth label been out there and how have you dealt with that? Uh, you know, my whole life I've been very honest with, you know, where I stand religiously, spiritually. Um, all my friends, you know, I've been called the Bible thumper. I've been called, you know, a church boy, all of that. You know, obviously <laughs> being a preacher's kid, you know, I think I have an advantage, uh, you know, with, with my knowledge in the scriptures. My dad's always, you know, challenged me to, to look at things. But, um, you know, for the most part, I mean, I haven't been, you know, the guy that's, that's down people's throats about, oh, hey, this is actually fact. Hey, you know, just you know, outside of even, you know, discussing biblical cosmology, you know, I mean, when, when somebody asks me a question and I give them an answer and, you know, I'll give them the scripture. If they ask for a prayer or anything, I would, you know, I'll, I'll pray for them, pray with them, pray for their family. Uh, but, you know, I've I, I pretty much kept the, the people. I, I don't have a huge group of friends, but those that are close with me, they know about it. They know about it. Um, but, you know, I haven't gone, you know, too, too deep into detail uh except for one or two of them which uh you know they're kind of the conspiracy theorists you know friends okay and yeah very very aggressive <clears throat> sort of thing nice cool well that always uh, always helps when you're kind of getting into these discussions so overall it's been a positive experience for you harrison yes for sure um you know this about this time last year uh well you know probably 10 or 11 months ago i was working uh, i do home renovation you know full time so i was working uh with a company uh, locally and you know I had time during my day uh, where I was we were doing a, a, a house flip so I would bring my speaker and my my phone into the house and I'd be painting the whole living room just uh, you know starting to look at videos I've watched some of yours Rob Skiba's uh, who else uh, Chad Taylor you know a couple other guys uh, Rick Hummer and you know honestly just taking it upon myself to just analyze things you know kind of going into it but uh, you know the more I listen and you know, I was painting or I was cutting wood or whatever um, but I honestly, it just dawned on me. I was like, yes, like this is actually something that I'm willing to try, willing to believe in, willing to look into. Hmm. Um, so, well, that's very cool. Well, I appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing your thoughts. Uh, I Absolutely. think it's really important that, uh, you know, there's so much support, uh, in your family and that really does help, you know, on this journey going forward, you know, definitely fighting for the truth. Yeah. It means a lot, you know, to me. And to have my entire family, you're you know, blessed. There you're blessed. On the Plain world. and simple, man. You're blessed yeah. to see that many, and just how how oh, it's yeah. all gone down. Absolutely. There's no yeah, way. I mean, we've really stayed uh, close together as a family. You know, doesn't mean we're perfect. We have our, you know, disputes, and we we have days where we're all just going in the different direction. Sure. But we try to come together at least once or or twice a week. You know, for family dinners, and awesome. you know, just to keep that connection. So no, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I appreciate uh, Harrison coming on. Maybe we'll go to Holden next. I had a lot of time to chat with Holden at Take on the World. So yeah, if Holden is around. Yeah, Holden. Right here. How's it going? Nice. How you doing, man? Doing pretty well. <laughs> so when we were chatting there at Take on the World, you kind of mentioned that uh, you know your dad approached you actually first of all people and said, "Hey, man." <laughs> What what was that like, you know, uh, being the one in the family to, to get the information first, especially when it came to Flat Earth? Well, it kind of blew my mind, if I'm being honest. Um, as my dad mentioned, I was doing, uh, I did a year of, or I did my junior year uh, in online school. And so I was just, I got, you know, a laptop and a printer and that kind of stuff from the school I was going through. So I was just doing my work and I think my dad had gone to the store or he he was doing something. He came home and I was just at the table working on my schoolwork and he kind of just brought it up and, <laughs> in, in a really interesting way. He said something about how he, he saw a picture of the sun with the clouds in front of it and the clouds behind it. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. That that goes completely against everything. And he was talking about, you know, how the sun and the moon are up there and they're um, and there were different videos about how they look level and stuff like that. And I thought he was just messing with me, but we started to look into it <laughs> and it was interesting. I mean, I, I missed a day of school just looking at that. <laughs> yeah. We, we kind of got down the rabbit hole and, and I uh, told him, I said, you know, go look outside. You can see the sun and the moon 
in the sky at the same time in the daylight, and he was tripping out on that. But I love the part of the story where he's like, "Yeah, I missed pretty much the entire day of school because I was looking." <laughs> yeah, at yeah. That's so, yeah, see, I, that's I, so I was, flat Earth. I mean, you I was get supposed to in. be his like, you know, to do the online school, you had kind of have like a parent mentor who signs up with you, and yeah. you know they. They check and make sure you're turning in your work on time and you're not missing assignments and they're supposed to keep you on task. But I just kind of felt like this is an education that that money can't buy. So sure. <laughs> school's in session. It's it's really hard to even concentrate when you come to this knowledge or this is presented to you. You're just like, what? Are you kidding yeah. me? Everything that I knew, you know, is wrong. I mean, as far as uh, the earth and the sun, moon and stars, it's just so overwhelming. So yeah, I can imagine it'd be hard to concentrate on studies when all of a sudden that was uh, brought up, you know, definitely uh, when you had brought it up with your, your, your son Holden and uh, you know, from there, what was the journey like Holden for you? Like just seeing everything that ha happened with your dad, maybe you can comment just, uh, you know, on your perspective based on, you know, what you were feeling and what you were seeing. Well, at that point I had, uh, only myself, my dad, and my mom had known. They told me to like keep it quiet because they wanted to address the family like as a whole, as opposed sure. to me just <laughs> talking about it. Because I didn't have all the information. I just had a few things that stood out to me. Um, and it, it was interesting. I remember seeing the video about the the NASA astronauts, all the bloopers and stuff, which was funny because I was already on board uh, more than anybody else. So I was I was just as excited to watch as I was to, like see how my siblings reacted and all that. Um, and actually, what happened when my dad was fired, I was at Harding University in Arkansas. So I was 700 miles away. And uh, I don't remember what I was doing that day, but my dad texts me and says, um, do you have time to FaceTime or can we call you? And I was like, uh, not right now, but, you know, I'll let you know when because I had class or homework or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I knew something was wrong because or something was up, at least, because very rarely do we all like sit down to all talk even at home and stuff, um, unless it's something serious or something everybody needs to hear. So I, I thought either something important or something bad is going on. And that's when I found out, I had to find out over FaceTime that my dad was fired and that, that took a toll. Mm. That was difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. But in yeah. the end, I think, I think it worked out the best because uh, the Lord knew what he was doing and he put me in a place where I was surrounded by other believers and, and I had the the support and all that kind of stuff that I needed. So how short, like shortly after you got fired, uh, Nate, how long was it until the whole family knew? Well, um, uh, I got fired in the morning and we see Holden was away at school. Harrison was at work and the two younger kids were also at school and it was on a Friday, which meant, uh, that the two kids had marching band. And so um, they would do marching band, you know, Friday nights for the football games for the high school. And so we were like, man, you know, we're not going to have a chance to get most people together until like 10 or 1030 at night. So it was really hard for Jennifer and I to just sit on that all day. But we wanted to try to get everyone together that we could, which was Harrison, Hudson and Hannah. And so we knew we couldn't do that till about 1030 p.m. So we messaged Holden while he was at school and we said, hey, we're going to have a FaceTime. You know, we got an important thing we need to talk about. And so it was like 1030 or 11 o'clock at night. We had everybody here at the house, so five of us. Mm -hmm. And then we FaceTimed Holden and we felt really bad that this is how Holden is going to find out. But, you know, word travels fast and uh, we didn't want perhaps someone at the college to find out or something. We didn't want Holden to see on uh, social media, you know, mm -hmm. some of the teens from the youth group of the church that fired me. So we did it all. Uh, we did it all at the same time. And it was very tough. You know, you, it was hard. We dreaded it because uh, we knew the kids needed to know. But immediately you could just see the look on their face. You know, this was the second time mm -hmm. that uh, their dad had been treated unfairly. And uh, so it was rough, but, you know, Holden handled it so much better than we thought Which he would. Which was worse, the first time or the second time? The, well, you kids, Holden, what do you think? Second or first time was harder? Uh, hearing about you getting fired? Yeah. Probably the second time, because the first time I didn't fully understand, you know, I'm, I'm not sure any of us really got it. Yeah. I mean, we understood the concept of someone losing their job, but what that yeah. meant, especially for someone in your uh, career path. 
yeah. to the, the chances of you finding something yeah. very close that suits all of our needs in terms of like location is yeah. difficult. So. Yeah, most of the kids are saying that it's, uh, you know, maybe the second one, but Harrison had a comment here. Yeah, just uh, like for the first one, you know, we had the, the three month period to kind of acclimate and say, OK, well, you know, we're not going to be here much longer. What are we going to do? You know, when, when you came home, I mean, if we hadn't had our own house, you know, if we had still lived, you know, in front of the church in the parsonage, I mean, we'd be out of house and home. Yeah. You know, I mean, what would have gone on from there? Um, and it was immediate, you know, yeah. like immediately you're fired. Yeah, it was a real blessing that we had we had j purchased the home that we're in now. Uh, we had purchased it about a year before I got fired. Hmm. And uh, I'm so glad we did because for five and a half, six years, uh, well, six years, we lived in the church-owned parsonage. Mm. So, you know, could you imagine, Robbie, yeah. you're called in suddenly, you have no idea what's going on, you get fired in less than five, ten minutes, and if we had lived in the church-owned home, you know, they would have said, well, you've got to be out by such and such time. Mm -hmm. And we would have been displaced, and uh, we would have been operating then on half of our income, mm -hmm. uh, household income, which would have made it very difficult for us to find a place like the one we have that's big enough for a family of six. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the father was watching out. He, he obviously knew the time frame. He knew what was coming. And uh, we were, that was our security was, you know what? We still have our home. We still have our family. And we trust in God. He's, you know, there's a reason for this. And uh, he's going to move us forward, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always, I always wonder as well, too, just in the circles, just with your uh, your kids, as far as, uh, you know, peers, um, just the rumors, the gossip, you know. Yeah. And I've asked you this before. Does really anyone know, you know, like you mentioned before, that people are watching you on YouTube and stuff, but maybe uh, they can comment if they know anybody, you know, from the church or anybody that they were hanging out with, you know, or kind of following the journey? Yeah, I mean, I think that, the kids would probably agree that most of the people are that are looking into it were kind of uh, in the closet because yeah. they saw they saw how we were treated, right? Sure. Um, but I know that I know that Holden was aware of a family. It's interesting. Before I got fired, he had had this conversation with one of the kids from the youth group, who had casually said something. I don't know how the topic came up, but he had said that his family were, were flat earthers, right? Mm. This was before we went to the conference. Mm. And then uh, all of a sudden I get fired. And uh, then it's like all of a sudden, you know, he was denying that his family were flat earthers. So Yeah, uh, we were at church camp and it, it just came up. Uh, we all thought he was trying to be goofy. I don't know how it came up. We were talking about creation or something like that. But he brought it up. We all just kind of brushed it off. We thought he was joking around. And then uh, after my dad was fired, you know, I didn't I didn't stay in touch with too many of the people in the youth group. It was just difficult. I wasn't really keeping in touch with them anyway because I was so busy at college. Mm -hmm. But he happened to message me and ask me what was up. And, of course, he had a side of the story that was different mm -hmm. from our view. And there's always going to be two sides of the story, but sure. it seemed pretty skewed. So I asked him, I was like, you know, didn't you say this a while ago, what you believed? And, and he, I guess he changed his mind. He said he read into it more and and it wasn't what he thought it was or something like that. Mm. So was like, yeah, right, interesting story. Hannah has an experience, if she can jump in real absolutely. quick. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, so I became friends with one of uh, the seniors at the high school that we went to, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we were just, like, kind of talking back and forth, just getting to know each other, and she had talked to one of my brothers before because uh, she was friends with... Um, him before I knew her and she knew that my dad got fired and so she was like hey she just uh, messaged me one day and she was like hey didn't your dad get fired for flat earth or something and that kind of like mm -hmm. shocked me it's like because mm. I didn't know like how she would have known that and then I was like yeah how did you know that and she explained that um, Harrison had told her and I was like, oh, okay. And she we talked for, like, hours, just messaging back and forth, like, explaining how it happened, why it happened, my personal views, the views of my family and stuff. And we actually uh, set up, a like, a little date to meet at both of um, our friend's house that was close to our house. And we just talked for, like, three or four hours about 
like flat earth it was really cool yeah we were getting concerned because we were like she's been gone so long and we we, <laughs> we knew that she was going to broach the subject but yeah. when hannah came back she shared with us you know about what what they talked about and she shared with us about all the proofs that she gave them and the bible I mean, we were blown away. We were like, man, Hannah just totally, you know, killed it, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was that was cool. I mean, she was uh, she was sharing her beliefs, you know, and she didn't even need us there. She didn't need her parents there. She was already, you know, she had looked into it. She had looked at scripture. She knew what she believed. So that was that was really cool. That is really cool. It was really funny, too, because when um, when I got to the house, because the friend's house is like right down the street from us. So I just walked there. I got in the front door and she goes, okay, mom, we're going to go upstairs to talk about flat earth. And she's like, okay, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so we just walked upstairs, sat down mm. and That's hilarious. Just had a really long conversation, but it was really insightful. And um, I showed them a video by Shane Dawson, okay. who's mm-hmm. a YouTuber, but yep. he did like, he has a conspiracy theory, uh, series on his channel where he mm-hmm. just explores different topics and one of the videos he talked about flat earth with his brother who believed it yeah and he um just had his brother like explain what the theory that's a great was video i know exactly which video you're talking about i've actually mirrored yeah. it on my channel great video it's yeah it's a really good one just to like like a 101 if you're yeah. Yeah, if you're trying to talk to someone and you want them to know like a basis on your beliefs. Mm-hmm. So I showed them that video and they were like asking questions and I didn't think that they were like trying to make fun of me in any mm-hmm. way. Like that was obviously any time you're telling someone about a topic that is kind of, you know, taboo or whatever. Sure. Mm-hmm. There's always the fear of persecution or like why do you believe that that's so dumb or just anything. And but they were really open-minded. They were really nice about it. I don't know if any of them looked into it afterwards or if they have come to believe it, but I mean, yeah, at and, least uh, I got to share it. Yeah, and actually, Holden, my second oldest, is dating now one of the gals that Hannah flat smacked. So, yeah. so uh, she knew what she was getting herself into, at least nice. in part. So, very but, cool. Uh, that's I crossed awesome. that bridge so Holden didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> That's Paved the very way. Cool. That's very cool. Well, we haven't talked to uh, Hudson yet uh, as far as uh, his take on everything. Maybe he could comment and chime in a little bit here. Yeah, go ahead, bud. Yeah, where to start? I'm actually fascinated. I'm actually fascinated, Hudson, because, you know, when I was talking to Holden, he was mentioning that you were the most analytical, the most kind of scientific, that it took you kind of the longest. Maybe you can explain your initial reaction and then also just how you wrestled with this, you know, with science and all that in your head. Well, I guess to start, um, as some background, my freshman year, uh, I was taking the uh, biology class, you know, your basic freshman biology class. Uh, so I was prepping for the the evolution section of, of all that fun stuff. Uh, and I would I would uh, I like to go to we uh, shoot what was it? It was like Answers in Genesis, you know, like apologetics mm-hmm. stuff like that, mm-hmm. uh, and their take on like creation and such. So I was I was pretty pretty deep into that, especially my freshman year. And I I would like to uh, fashion myself as someone who is more on the analytical and more philosophical side of things that sure. we, you know, think about the all that sort of stuff so so when this this whole ordeal happened it was just it was very it was very interesting for me to think about it because it's not like i trusted science anyway for the most part sure um but but it seemed almost like like a stretch you know too much of a stretch to, sure you know, yeah absolutely so if it, the first time that i heard about this we were talking about the when Holden was staying at home and, and Dad were there chatting. I came home from school, and Holden just hits me out the door, and he was like, "Oh, by the way, <laughs> we, were just flat. we figured it out today." And I was like, "Oh yeah, very impressed." Where'd you go? Go turn on the Xbox. <laughs> so, and I never really thought anything of it. So, you know, this this round of the take on the world when we went, I had a moment. I was sitting. I was just thinking. I was like, "Dang," you know. That moment, I never thought would have would have turned into anything, and here we are at this big event. You know, my dad's speaking. Mm-hmm. It was it was quite the turn, and I've had a lot of a lot of turns in in thinking and in, in my perspective on on the world and, and such. It's 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 hard to hard to wrestle with because it's like to what degree do you trust science? 
Sure. And, and what degree do you not? Now, there, and I, for, for several months, I didn't really look into it too much. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch too many videos like the others, but of course, my parents were, were always there, you know, <laughs> and, and not, not forcing it, you know, but uh, they commented where they could and they were trying to teach me what they know. Um, and so over time, I've, I'm kind of like looking at stuff and I'm, of course, going to take on the world and seeing all these wonderful presentations and it's like, it's starting to click a lot more in sure. certain degrees. And then for me, basically right now, I'm at the point where it's like, I can't prove definitively either one because I can't like launch myself into space or into mm -hmm. the firmament. So, <laughs> but I'm inclined to believe that perhaps that the earth is flat. At least I would, I would like to hope that it is, you know, because that means the Lord is right there and, mm -hmm. and. He has so much, so much influence and power that this is the way that it is. And like, it's almost like the opposition is proof of his strength. Mm -hmm. Like if the deception is this great, like we're onto something good. Like we're, we're on the right path. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes, you know, taking that gradual journey is, is beneficial. You don't have to rush into these things. You know, like one of the, mo the models that a lot of flat earthers will say is like, you know, go do your own research. Right. And I mean, when it comes to the Bible, read the Bible for yourself. It's right there. You know, that's what really hit me hard, you know, at the very beginning. I mean, it's one thing. And I think Rob Skiba struggled with that as well. He's like, well, the Bible, you know, 100%, you know, I believe it's, uh, you know, not a spinning ball flying through space. But I got to do these experiments. I got to, you know, do this empirical science, which is cool, too, because we're really getting back to true science. Right. And and then in relation to the Bible, this is just something that kind of struck me as I was explaining this situation to my girlfriend. Um Obviously, we were distraught about what happened, so we were just, you know, kind of mulling it over and letting people know and trying to figure out what to do next. So I was talking to my girlfriend, and, and in regards to the Bible and, and the way that at least us flat earthers think, uh, is it was it was very interesting. It seemed almost like reasonable, because everybody will, will will joke about like oh flat earthers, right? You know, spinning whatever, and they make fun of us and they immediately dismiss it. And I've had this experience. A lot. Not that I'm extremely vocal in high school, but in my mm. humanities class, which you know is supposed to be the more open-minded topics, <laughs> we we would get into discussion of conspiracy, uh, and then they would just you know make fun of you know you got the moon landing. Everybody's kind of like eh, but they like make fun of it or whatever, and they don't really want to touch 9/11. And then they just make fun of the flat earthers. Mm -hmm. But having experienced this, it seems actually somewhat reasonable to me. It, it's it seems like two core things, which is a distrust of the government is like who doesn't have that mm -hmm. right it's, it's simply <laughs> to the degree and then a literal versus like symbolic interpretation of the bible it's it seems very very simple to me the difference is not some astronomical thing so i oh know that's that perspective is is allowed me to to sort of think of of other conspiracies yeah or say like uh, the moon landing looking into 9 11 and, and such and just being like you know how unreasonable are they so Is before the flat earth so before flat earth hudson where were you on the conspiracy scale and i always say you know gfk or you know the moon landing before flat earth it was kind of like where are you on that conspiracy scale before flat earth were you kind of that type that really weren't into conspiracy theories well i must say uh this is a note it's interesting how how much like 9 11 and the moon landing is brought up just like as a conspiracy in its own like isolated form mm -hmm. like i'm inclined to believe that more people like believe it in their own like hearts as much as they'll like admit it to them because like everybody talks about it they, even at school where they make fun of flat earthers they're like yeah but what about like the structural integrity of the buildings like how do they all drop it at once? Sure. and you know so in, in, in sort of a way it's like it's fun it's kind of like let's go cool. <laughs> yeah right so you know going to a public high school and being a teenager uh, in america it can be wonderful but sometimes it's just like the most boring thing and you're like, oh, man, I wish that there was a little something more to life. And then here comes these wonderful conspiracies of like, well, what if the moon doesn't exist? You know, it kind of it's a paradigm shift. Nice. So I, I entertained them as, really as entertainment. It was like, well, sure. this has, you know, a nugget of truth to it, it seems. So it's reasonable. Sure. So let's, let's think about it, maybe just to make life a little more uh, interesting. So, so, Robbie, I wanted to have Hudson say something real quick about one when, when I got fired, what was uh, what was going through oh, your yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, I remember a moment vividly. I was sitting in the living room, and I was across from my mom and my sister, and they kind of like huddled together, and they were hugging and, and such. And I just had this this image in my mind, and it really, I mean, honestly, it just sucked. Like, <laughs> I was I was like what eight, 
the first time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. was... So I was I was young. I think the only memory of that whole incident I have is like sitting outside like a McDonald's or something. <laughs> or maybe it was the church and just yeah. hearing about this and not understanding. Um, and then we move on to the, the second iteration, uh, <laughs> getting fired twice. That's, but like, I just remember thinking like, like you gotta be, you gotta be joking, right? But I was like, this isn't, it's not something to joke about. Cause I was like, this is, it's too uncanny. Like this happened again. My, my dad got fired from the church again, but it was serious. And like, I remember it, it like hit me like a wave. I was like, like, what are, we, what are we supposed to do? Like, this happened? And, of course, we you start to make the connections of, like, why, what that means for us. And and I'll admit that's been, that's been rough for me to, to kind of tackle. Mm -hmm. Because of, because I'm inclined to believe, like, it's it's not unreasonable to believe in these things. Mm. And and I, I personally, I try to keep it as much of an open mind as I can. And so it's, like, hard to reconcile that with, like, the, the love we're supposed to have as Christians, the love of this this church family I thought I had for seven years, mm -hmm. to be gone in the blink of an eye. And not only that, like they, they haven't come to support us afterwards really much at all. Yeah. And that was just kind of almost like appalling. It just like, mm. we, we invested so much of ourselves into this church, and especially us kids. Yeah. Like, I mean, of course, this is dad's channel, and he's rocking it, <laughs> and I love it, but like we're we're behind him the whole way everything that happens to dad happened to us yes mm -hmm. he gets fired we get fired yeah yep. and that experience was was pretty terrible i remember waiting on that sunday first home church and and we were like getting the house clean getting ourselves prepped and ready to answer questions you know say prayers give hugs whatever for those who came to visit us and did we even get anyone yeah we, we had a couple people that did visit um after the church service ended they had announced it and so we did have initially, there was like four or five people that engaged with us right away, but it didn't take very long, you know, it kind of trickled down. And then the, then the first few months that after I was fired, there was only about two or three people that were checking in on us regularly. And, you know, the last few months, there hasn't been a single person. So, um, you We've know, done that's a lot of damage control at the church and yeah. scaring people off, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, you know, they painted me as a false teacher or as a crazy guy or whatever. But so, yeah. Um, it's really this topic, though. I mean, I say this all the time. It's yeah. really not personal. Yeah. This topic freaks people out, especially to yeah. us. They like to just like, let's just deal with this really quick. Let's just get it out. And we don't have yeah. to deal with it anymore. They're just so terrified. Um, you know, yeah. being kicked out of two churches, my family, you know, we've been through that experience where it's so abrupt. It comes out of nowhere. And there's something deeper going on because that's just not normal behavior for anyone let alone a church yeah hudson has one and, and you're right yeah. hudson has one more quick yeah, thing in, and in then... relation to this it's it almost seems like like an aggression it's it's ridiculous like not only are they are they afraid to tackle it they went ahead and called all the local congregations and let them know that dad was a quote false teacher yeah mm -hmm. like they they went out of their way to close all doors to dad for like for no reason and we had a you know good friend kevin seif at, at the at his church Oops got the name <laughs> <laughs> but Kevin's you know, a good dude yeah like like one one good man in his congregation we're, we're willing to be like no we know Nate like he's a good dude yeah but you know, like just the fact that they would go to such lengths almost to, to to shoot us in the foot yeah after all we've been through with them you know seven years I mean yeah. I've, been, I've been saying this a lot uh, you know to your father but uh, I really do believe this is newsworthy and it might be really profound if the entire family you know, contacting local media, but just telling your story. I think that uh, people need to hear this is what's happening to people, right? It's almost like you were selected for a reason. And quite interesting, like I said to you before, um, Nate, that uh, you're the very first pastor to come out publicly, not yeah. afraid, not being an anonymous. You know, I had mentioned that throughout the years, I had pastors reaching out to me about similar stories, but you're the very first one. And I do believe it's newsworthy. And it's something that maybe, you know, the entire family kind of getting behind and thinking, hey, let's do this. I really think that uh, the news media would pick it up. And I mean, just yeah, think about, definitely think about something pastor to consider. being fired for taking the Bible literal. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. And uh, it looks like, I don't know, we got about, what, five minutes, four or five minutes. Yep. Um, I wanted to let Hannah real quick before we go to the break, share her thoughts about what was going on when I got fired. Absolutely. Hannah's uh, joining us into hour two a little bit, correct? Mm -hmm. As well? Yep. Okay, she wants it. to stick around, so yeah. Good. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. I'll definitely pop in. All right. But the day I was 
the day I was fired. <laughs> yeah, you, everybody got fired that day. <laughs> the day my dad was fired. It was a Friday, and I'm in the marching band at my school. Um, and usually a bunch of the kids stay after school just because we're going to be there to go practice and march out. And we usually go to a little restaurant that's across the street um, from the school we go to. And, and so I was just hanging out with my friends. And that morning, I had asked the parents if I could stay after school. You and texted us from school. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that morning, I'd be like, can I stay after? And they're like, no, come home. Like, you gotta <laughs> do dishes and laundry or whatever it was. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> But then I texted them at school again because you know you gotta you gotta double try maybe in the morning they <laughs> they, were, they didn't have enough coffee or something like that. <laughs> so I, um, I texted them during lunch and they were like, "Yep, we'll bring you your uniform." And I, uh, that was a little weird. Yeah, we didn't we didn't want her to be the only kid home, and she would be able to sense like you know what is going on with mom and dad. So mm-hmm. yeah, so they just. They were like, yeah, we'll bring you your uniform. And that was like a little red flagish, but I was like, hey, I'm getting what I want, so whatever. <laughs> and yeah. so we marched that game. We probably lost because our team sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we got home that night, and everyone was sitting on the couch. And I was like, what's going on? And the parents were like, we got to talk to you guys about something. We're going to FaceTime Holden. And. You know, everyone said it. You're like, we're fired. This happened. They told us, like, the whole story that everyone knows about the elders texting them. And it was just really, like, kind of heartbreaking, honestly. Like, we've known these people for seven, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. It was just really difficult. I remember I was just, like, crying a lot because that's, you know... It's emotional. It's hard to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a complete shock to to everybody, even including myself. But yeah. imagine the kids' shock, you know. And then uh, this happened before, so you start to have kind of those, you know, like a flashback. And it and it really is a trauma. I mean, it is a it's an emotional, mental trauma, and a, I would even say a spiritual trauma. And I'm really proud of the kids and I'm, uh, you know how they've bounced back. I'm really thankful to the father for. You know, just helping us because, as you can hear, I mean, the kids are, they're all solid in their faith. Absolutely, and, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, uh, it's incredible. Survived. It's incredible. Yeah. I, I think they all should start uh, YouTube channels. And, there you uh, go. And come out there with their there story, and uh, you never know where it goes. But uh, obviously pray about it, but I, I definitely think that there's there's definitely something bigger for uh, your children in this story as well, too. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it seems very interconnected, and it's it's such an incredible story. And uh, I'm glad that it's able to be shared. And like I said, I'm serious that, uh, you know, definitely keep it in prayer about the media, because I think a lot of people need to know that pastors are being fired for, you know, taking the literal interpretation of the Bible. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's not right. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a form of abuse, in my opinion. But it's something mm-hmm. that, you know, we've talked about before. Anyways, we're going to go to hour two. Everyone that's watching on YouTube, this is it for the broadcast. Go to revolution.radio for hour two right after this break. Really appreciate you all being here. We got a lot more coming up right after this break.